Good morning, everybody. It's so good to have you here with us as we gather for worship here on this Mother's Day Sunday, as we gather in the house of the Lord, as we gather online for those who are joining us virtually. We wish all, all of you ladies happy Mother's Day. Uh, for whatever role you play in the raising of, of children, uh, both yours or your extended families or the communities. We thank you for the gifts that you give and the ways in which you support and help uh, help us all become better people. Uh, we, we give you thanks and we continue to pray for you. Would you pray with me now this morning as we gather for worship? Gracious God, thank you for today, for the many blessings that you have given to us. Lord, we thank you for mothers and for all that they have done for us. Uh, even in their imperfections, we just give you thanks for their, their hearts and their ways in which they, they come alongside of us in so many different ways. Lord, bless this time together this morning. May we know your presence here with us. May we know your peace that fills this place. And we ask this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening scripture this morning comes from Psalms. Uh, Psalm 24. The psalmist writes these words. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in idols uh, or swear by a false god. They will receive blessings from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, those who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Let us join now as we, as we enter into, into our time together. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to worship. Come. Now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for them to gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come. Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come. Willingly we give our lives to you, willingly we bow our knees, willingly we choose to serve you, Lord. And worship endlessly. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come. Just as you are before your for God, come, come. To 
God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atoned for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. So come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest defender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. So come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. Oh, things he has taught us, great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. The purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. So come to the Father through Jesus the Son. Then give him the glory, great things he has done. of all creation, of water, earth, and sky. Heavens are your tabernacles. Glory to the Lord on high. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy, universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and earth. Early in the morning, I will celebrate the light. When I stumble in the darkness, I will call your name by night. God wanders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy, universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. 
God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are all holy, holy. Precious Lord, reveal your heart to me. You are holy, holy. Universe, declare your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. As we come to prayer this morning, there is a new prayer brochure in the back for those who would like to pick one up this morning. It's updated with uh, not only requests, but joys as well, and we encourage you to pick one up and, and use it during, during the week, during the month, to pray for those needs in our congregation, in our community, and in our, in our world as well. Are there prayer requests that you would like to share here this morning? Pardon? Mike Barnett's family, yes. Mike Barnett passed away uh, this past week, and we continue to lift up Mike's family in prayer. Let us pray together this morning as the people of God coming together, welcomed into God's presence. Gracious God, we do come before you this morning. We know that it is in your presence that we not only gather this morning, but it is in your presence that we live each and every day. You have invited us to bring before you the different prayer needs that we have. Not only the big ones, Lord, but the small ones as well, for you want us to bring our hearts to you. Lord, this morning as we come, we ask for your healing presence, your strengthening presence on those who are sick, those who are weak in body and mind. For we know, Lord, that it is in our weakness that you are made strong. For those, Lord, who are grieving the loss of loved ones, the loss of things in their lives, Lord, we lift before you the Barnett family as they grieve Mike's passing. For his friends and family, as, as they will uh, greatly miss him. We pray that you, your, will, that you will bring comfort to them and your peace will be made known to them in a very real and powerful way. Lord, we pray too that, that you will just be with our leaders, our president and vice president, our Congress, our governor, our city leadership. We hold them before you and ask your presence to be with them. There's many issues facing our leaders and our communities, and we pray that you will help us to find uh, answers. That we will treat one another with respect. And that you will guide and direct us in all that we do. We pray for our church, Lord, that you will continue to provide for us, that you will continue to be present with us in all that we do. Lord, we give you thanks for, for where you have brought us to and for the people who have gone before us. We know that we are part of the larger body of Christ and this, this body here seeks you and wants to know you. We pray, Lord, for your leadership and your guidance, for your provision and all the things that we need. Lord, we also pray for the blessings that you have given to us, for the changing of the seasons and the flowers that are growing. We thank you for the new life that surrounds us. 
We thank you for friends and family. And Lord, we thank you for mothers. For the women in our lives who have helped guide us and who have lifted us up when we have fallen. Who have shown us how to live lives in ways that um, are healthy and helpful. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, we began a series on the Beatitudes, a two-part series. And so we're going to continue with that today. So I'm going to read to you the Beatitudes once again from Matthew chapter 5. Remember, this is the beginning of how Matthew records the Sermon on the Mount. He, Jesus had been healing people. They had come to him, and he'd received them and healed them. And then he saw so many of them come. He had them sit down, Matthew records. And he began to teach them. And this is the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, which usually covers chapters 5, 6, and 7 of the book of Matthew. And so here is the Beatitudes uh, from Matthew 5, 1 through 12. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the, the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they prosecuted the prophets who were before you. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word this morning. If you remember from last week, for those who, who were here, when we talk about blessed, when Jesus talks about blessed here in the Beatitudes, it's a different meaning than what we usually think of when we think of being blessed. Usually in our world today, we, we think of if we're blessed, we have stuff. Things are going well for us. Things are happy. Our situations are good. But that's not what Jesus is referring to here. If you heard these beatitudes, these, these things that Jesus talked about being blessed because of, many of them aren't necessarily real pleasant. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who are persecuted. And so on. So when Jesus uses the term blessed here, he's referring to it in, a, in the sense that it is joy from God that nothing can take away. It's not determined on circumstances, on where we are in life, on what we have or what's going on. This joy comes from God and is deeper than anything we can, than anything we can create. It is something that no one else can take away. And our circumstances can't take it away. So when we talk about, what Jesus talks about here, being blessed, Jesus is referring to that deep, abiding joy that comes because of our faith, that comes from God, and that nobody can take anything of that away from us, including the world, including Satan. So we're going to cover the last four here today. And I want to encourage you to begin to think about these things because none of these are just beliefs. These are actions that we take, ways in which we live in faith 
that bring about the, this joy. But Jesus says, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Mercy is a good thing when, it, when you're receiving it, isn't it? We all like to receive mercy. Sometimes I'm not sure where you like to give me. kind of one of those things that we like to get, but it's hard for us to give sometimes. In the same way of forgiveness. And in a lot of ways, these two are, 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 are the same. Jesus says elsewhere in the Gospels that in order to receive forgiveness, we have to be willing to forgive as well. And it's not a, necessarily a condition that says, okay, if I forgive, then I will be forgiven. But it's the condition of our heart that we have to be willing and humble to give mercy in order to receive mercy. If, if our hearts aren't humble, if our hearts aren't open to giving, there's no way we're going to receive it. There's no way we'll be able to receive it. So when Jesus says here, blessed are the merciful, joyful are the merciful. Joyful are those who give mercy to those around us. Now there's almost every day, you and I are in places where we would love to receive mercy. We're having a hard day and we snap at somebody. We're struggling with something going on in our lives or the world around us. We make a mistake at work or in school and we get to that point where we just can't go on. We're struggling with a certain kind of decision in our life. And we realize that it's not an easy decision, but we want mercy. We want grace in the midst of all of this. And so when Jesus says, blessed are the merciful, He's reminding us that it's important for you and I to give that mercy to those around us. For somebody who's, who might snap at us. Who might make a decision that, that causes us some pain. That might say something to us that may not meant to be hurtful, but might come across that way. Jesus tells us, you have to have that heart, and you have to be willing to show mercy so that you are open and available to receive mercy. When Jesus says, blessed, joyful are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. It's not only the condition of our hearts, but it's our willingness to show others around us mercy and grace and forgiveness and all that that, that entails. That's a hard thing to do sometimes. Our society doesn't often say we're to show others mercy. Our society often says, you go after them. You find a way to get them back. You find a way to, to break them down. But Jesus says, blessed are the merciful. They will be shown mercy. Jesus then goes on to say, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And this one really reminds me back a few weeks when we talked about uh, David, King David in the Old Testament, where, where he wrote Psalm 51 after being confronted by the prophet after his affair with Bathsheba. After Nathan confronted David, David realized his wrongness, his dark of heart, darkness of heart. He wrote this beautiful psalm that says, Create in me a clean heart, God. Create in me a pure heart, if you will, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, but renew that right spirit within me. And 
this mirrors that very, very closely. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. It very much takes pureness of heart to see God. To recognize, not to say see God, to face God's presence right directly in front of us, but to know God's presence around us. Oftentimes the things of our heart become distractions. The sin of our lives pulls us down. There is much in our world that distracts us, that you could say pollutes our hearts. So it takes work, it takes intentionality for us to not only make, or better yet, allow God to purify our hearts, but then also to keep them pure. We have to watch what we say, what we look at, what we, what we do, how we live. What we allow into our lives. A phrase from many, many years ago. Do you remember this phrase, garbage in, garbage out, when it talks about computers? Do you remember that from uh, too long ago? But it's the same with you and I. If we allow garbage into our lives, if we allow garbage into our minds and our hearts, we will have garbage flow out of us. We need to watch what we put into our lives. So Jesus is basically saying here, joyful are those who have a pure heart, for they know God's presence around and within them. They see God with them. Instead of the things of this world. Instead of the things that distract us. And then Jesus goes on to say, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. As I've read through these Beatitudes. For a lot of reasons, I think this one is often the hardest. The scripture talks about being a peacemaker, or when, Jesus, when scripture talks about peace in and of itself, it's not an absence of conflict. We often talk about peace as being having an absence of conflict, having maybe a quiet space. No wars, no fighting, no arguing, no uh, conflict or chaos around us or within us. I think that's certainly part of it. But usually scripture, when it talks about peace, goes much deeper than that. It's more of a completeness, a wholeness, a shalom. That's, that's kind of the meaning of the word shalom, is that wholeness. That you are at peace because you have what you need. You are in right relationships with those around you. You are taken care of. When Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, he's talking to you and I about how are we living our lives, how are we working to bring about this wholeness this completeness in our world today? Are we sharing what we have? Are we lifting people up? Are we taking care of those around us in a way that they know they're loved and they can sense God's presence with them? For many people, that's very difficult to do. I'm not sure why. But in our world today, that seems to be very difficult to be a peacemaker. One who helps bring about completeness or wholeness in the world today. And so we work at that. We say, okay, God, how can I be a peacemaker today? How can I take care of the world around me? How can I take care of my neighbor? How can I take care of my enemies? How can I take care of 
my friends? How can I take care of the boys? How can I be a peacemaker, one who brings about completeness and wholeness in the world? Jesus says, they will be called the children of God. I like that phrase. I like being called a child of God. I think that's important for us. And so when we look at what Jesus is saying here, he says, joyful are those who work for completeness and wholeness in the world. For they will be called children of God. And I think it's not only God who calls us children of God, but it may just be those around us who call us children of God as well, as they see how we act and how we live. A great example of this is found in, in Acts, the early part of Acts, where the people who knew Jesus after Pentecost, they lived a different way. They shared what they had, money, food, resources, whatever they needed, and they gave to those who were in need. People saw this new way of living. I wonder, what is this about? I want in on it. I want to be part of this way living, this new way of living. So Jesus says, joyful are the, pe are, excuse me, joyful are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And then he goes on, and this is the last one, it's kind of a long one, kind of expands on it. He says, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The reality is we don't have persecution in our country. We may have somebody laugh at us because of our faith, or question our faith, maybe even challenge our faith from time to time. But that's not what Jesus is saying here. The people of the early church, as they went forward from, from Acts, even some of the, the times in Jesus' ministry, when the government came down upon them, when other people came down upon them and threatened their lives because they followed Jesus. That's persecution. But when people do question us, challenge us because of our faith, because of the righteous things that we do, and I think that, that, that key there, persecuted because of righteousness, our, if we are doing right things, if we are living the right way, God's way, and people question us, people persecute us, people challenge us, then, then Jesus says, you can be joyful because of that. Because yours is the kingdom of heaven. And again, that goes back up to the first beatitude, where he says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus says, blessed are you when you're persecuted, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. And I don't think he's necessarily meaning kingdom of heaven, specifically after death, the great, great time after death. Yet Jesus is saying here, yours is the kingdom of heaven here on earth. And you receive God's presence. You know God's presence with you. And you are living the way God has called us to. You are doing God's will on earth as it is in heaven, as the Lord's Prayer reminds us. And so these Beatitudes are not just, they're, well, they're not, period, things that we believe in. These are actions. 
These are things that we do specifically because of our faith. These are things that, are, that God does through us because of our faith. And God says through Jesus here, you can be joyful because of these things. And it's a joy that no one can take away because of your faith. That joy is not based on circumstances, but it's based on God's presence around you and with you. And so this morning, I just want to ask you this morning, how's your joy? How is your joy in your life today? For those who are mourning, you know the comfort of God with you. For those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, are you joyful because you're being filled? You're letting that filling flow from you. For those who are showing mercy, as difficult as it may be, are you receiving mercy? Do you know the, God's presence with you through that? Maybe you are experiencing some persecution because of your faith, because of the things that you're doing. Even in that, you can experience joy. The blessed presence of God in your life that brings about joy beyond, beyond the circumstances, beyond anything else. And Jesus says, this is not something that will happen in the future. It does happen in the here and now. So this morning I ask, where's your joy? How's your joy? If it's a little low, maybe we look at how we can increase that by doing these things in the Beatitudes. Maybe we look at, say, what's clogging my heart? break out the, the proverbial liquid funnel. Maybe you can say, how can I be a better peacemaker? And we find ways to share. One of the things that we do as a church is we, we fill our cart. Where we share our food, share the resources that we have with those who but that's just one way in which we can do that. So I want you to take some time this week. Take some time to say, okay, how's my joy? How can I find ways to increase that joy? How can I find ways to know God's presence more fully here and now? And how important is that? Because it is in doing so that we draw closer to God through Christ, that we draw closer to God as we participate in the kingdom of heaven, in the doing of God's will here on earth as it is in heaven. Our joy grows, our excitement grows, and our faith grows. Would you pray with me this morning? Gracious God, we thank you for today for all that you have done for us, for all that you have blessed us with. We just lift it up to you and we give it back. And we say, God, use us in ways that, that we can only imagine at this point. Use us in ways that show your love and your grace and your mercy to those around us. Lord, when we mourn, when we struggle, may you lift us up. May you show us how to be merciful in heart and deed. That we might be open to receiving your mercy and your grace. 
Lord, we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. prepare for communion this morning. We're going to, going to sing the song, O Come to the Altar. It's a song of invitation for us to come together this morning in communion. Uh, because of some shipping issues, we don't have our, our normal prepackaged communion this morning. So you can receive communion in one of two ways. Uh, after John comes forward and gives our meditation, we will, I will come and invite you if you would like to come and, and take communion here at the table as we did last week. If you'd like to remain in your seat, uh, Dave Hill will bring communion to you. Uh, it's your choice. But we gather together at the table where all are invited, and it is all the people who have gathered here today. Let us sing this morning, O Come to the Altar. you hurting as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure found. Jesus is calling. John. our hunger, and our thirst for him. Would you pray with me, please? Our dear Father in heaven, we, uh, we do a thank you uh, for this opportunity to hunger 
and to thirst for you. In Christ's name, amen. Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took a bread and he blessed it and he said to the, pe the people gathered, his disciples around that table, he said, this is my body which is given for you. Whenever you eat of it, remember me. And he passed it around and all of them ate together. He then took a cup from the table and again he blessed it before, the, before his disciples. He said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink of it, remember me. And he passed it around, and all the disciples drank. Dave will be bringing around a tray, and there's two cups together. One has the bread, the other has the juice. If you would like to come forward at this time, we invite you to come down the center aisle. And if you'd like to have Dave bring you uh, communion, uh, just stay where you are as we uh, take communion together. Would you come and receive this morning?
before we have our closing song and, and blessing of sending out a few announcements to be made and rem reminders for us. Our offering box is in the back. Uh, if you'd like to give uh, through your worship, our giving, our tithes, our offerings are part of our acts of worship as we give back to God out of what God has given to us. So we encourage you to give this morning. You can put it in the offering box in the back. You can give online through our website at dallasfirstcc.com. Uh, there's a, a link there, a button there you can press, and it'll walk you through the, the steps very easily to do that. Uh, your gifts and offerings help the ministry of the church, uh, not only here locally, but worldwide as well. So we encourage you to give and, and be generous uh, in your gifts as well. Uh, some announcements this morning. Uh, Women's Bible Study continues to meet on Wednesday mornings at 930. Uh, we encourage you to be here for that as best you can. Uh, they're having a good old time. And... It, I, I don't know what it is, but whenever the women get together, there there's always food available. And so, <coughs> excuse me, I encourage you to come and be a part of, of the the soul the souls that are being fed uh, Wednesday mornings at 9:30. Uh, Christian, oh, I'm sorry, Christian Women's Fellowship is not meeting. I, I forgot to take that out. No CWF. That was last week. And then, but the men's Bible study is meeting this Thursday at at 8:30 in the morning. And we encourage uh, men to come and be a part of that as well. Uh, prayer brochures in the back. We encourage you to pick one of those up. The newsletter is also back there, the most current issue. And we continue to do our Wednesday and Friday Zoom meetings. If you, if you don't get the links for those during the week, uh, we, just let us know. And we can make sure that you do get those. Our fill cart is, is in the back if you brought your food. If you didn't, uh, it will be here throughout the week, and you can bring it during the week. If you come to one of the Bible studies or just... Drop it off at the church. Uh, you can do that as well. Our one community-wide worship service is coming up the end of June. It's a service where all the churches in Dallas get together at the football stadium. We're crossing our fingers. It's not going to be as warm as it was last week, last year. We did it in August, and it was just we about melted out there. And uh, hopefully the end of June won't be quite as warm. But it's a powerful time of gathering not only a fellowship, but of a worship and being together as the one church in Dallas. Uh, we gather because we are all believers, and we all come together in the name of God. Uh, there's another picture of the women's Bible study and uh, the fun that they have. And then our closing song this morning is, We Are Called to Be God's People. It's a song that reminds us that in the midst of everything that we go through, that we are called to be God's people, to be merciful to be joyful, to be sharing and generous, to be peacemakers in all that God does through us because we are God's people and we can live that way each day. So will you stand as we sing this morning, we are God's people. called to be God's people, showing by our lives His grace, one in heart and one in spirit, sign of hope for all the race. Let us show how He has changed us and remade us as His own. Let us share our lives together. Shall around his throne. We are called to be God's servants, working in his world today, taking his own task upon us. All his sacred words obey. Let us rise to his son. Dedicate to him our all that we may be faithful servants, quick to answer now his call. We are called to be God's prophets, speaking for the truth and right, standing firm for godly justice, bringing let us seek the courage needed, our high calling to fulfill, that we all may know the blessing of 
the doing of God's will. May we go forward being God's people in the world today. Happy Mother's Day, and may God's blessing be upon you. Amen. Amen.